This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 332. The 10 Things Perpetually Healthy Nerds Do That Unhealthy People Don't, part two, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors, and always with permission from the sites, of course. Now, today is a continuation from yesterday, so if you're new here, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That's episode 331. We'll get through some more of this article today and continue this post all the way through Friday. Before I get to part two, I wanna remind you we're just about a week away from another book raffle. That means someone random on our mailing list is about to win a book from us. If you wanna be a part of that, there's still time. It's totally free. All you have to do is enter your email address at oldpodcast.com. All right, I know you're eager to hear part two of Steve's post, so let's jump right in and continue optimizing your life. The 10 things perpetually healthy nerds do that unhealthy people don't, part two by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Three, they don't go on diets. They adjust their nutrition. Perpetually unhealthy people have a love-hate relationship with diets, mostly hate. They go on diets all the time, and then they go off diets, and then they go on another diet, and then they find another diet that's supposed to promise even faster, easier weight loss, so they switch to that one. Unhealthy people get dieting wrong from the start, and this is what dooms them. Unhealthy people go on a diet for a month or two until bathing suit season is over and they can't wait to go back to, quote, eating normally because dieting sucks. The problem is that their eating normally is often the reason why they're overweight in the first place. Temporary changes to one's eating results in temporary changes to one's physique. Like an addict chasing the next high, somebody consistently has to chase the next diet because their normal eating is the problem in the first place. And I'm with you. Dieting sucks. Starving yourself, eliminating all of your favorite foods, and trying to use willpower to avoid candy and sweets is terrible. No wonder people abandon diets as soon as they start them. They think, if this is what it takes to be skinny, I'd rather stay fat and happy. Let's compare this to PHNs. They don't go on diets because they know diets suck and temporary changes won't work. Instead, they make adjustments to their nutrition and eat for their goals. PHNs have internalized the following, quote, The concept of normal eating is broken, which means it needs to change permanently. You never get to be done, end quote. Think about that for a second. If you are never done with your nutrition and you can't go back to how you were eating before, then the only way permanent success happens is if you actually enjoy and can stick with your new normal. Fortunately, because PHNs have a Groot mindset, this doesn't scare them. If giving up soda forever is scary, they slowly cut back from 12 a day down to one a day. If giving up pasta forever scares them, they learn about portion sizes and turn pasta into a special experience like making homemade pasta or only having it when they dine out at restaurants, etc. Here's another difference about PHNs. They usually don't do cheat days or feel guilty when they eat ice cream. That's a recipe, zing, get it, for self-loathing and shame. Instead, PHNs eat well most of the time and occasionally choose to consume foods that might not line up with their goals. Pizza while playing Dungeons and Dragons once a month, beers and wings on Sunday during football season, for example. PHNs have the same idea about supplements. They know supplements can't replace a great nutritional strategy, so they don't chase the latest and greatest. These things are fine because they are playing the long game, years, not weeks or months. So stop going on diets. Stop chasing silver bullets. Those are for werewolves. No more diet pills, cleanses, or crazy 30-day strategies. Nothing you do can be temporary, or the results will be temporary. Instead, make deliberate, incremental, permanent changes to your daily nutrition slowly over a period of many months. Don't feel guilty and don't do cheat days. Instead, eat to line up with your goals. If you are afraid of giving up something, don't. Work to make it more of a treat and less of a daily indulgence. Know that it took years for you to get to your current physique and it's going to take months, if not years, to correct it. Once you accept that you never get to be done, you'll learn that you have to enjoy the journey 
and pick changes that won't scare you away from adhering to your plan. Four, they know what's in the food they eat. Do you know how many calories and grams of sugar are in a can of Coke? Or how big a serving of peanut butter actually is? Or how many calories and carbs are in a cup of healthy granola? If you do, you're well on your way to being a PHN. Whether it's portion control, calorie counting, tracking macros, or even keeping a food journal, PHNs have a rough idea of the nutritional breakdown of the food they consume regularly. After all, G.I. Joe tells us that knowing is half the battle. PHNs know their nutrition accounts for 90% or more of the battle when it comes to weight loss. And thus, that's where their focus is. Seriously, 90% or more. So they do their homework. If they eat the same thing regularly, they spend a few minutes educating themselves about how much they are actually eating every day. If they dine out, they do some rough calculations to track how many carbs, fats, and protein is in the meal they're about to eat. If they do bulk cooking for the week, they know how many calories and grams of protein are in each meal. With each meal tracked, this behavior adds up to a quick mental model every day of roughly how many calories a PHN consumes each day. This knowledge allows for shame-free and guilt-free meals even if they aren't part of the big picture. For example, a PHN will know that they're going to be eating pizza for dinner, so they opt for eggs and bacon for breakfast and the salad for lunch to even out their daily total. Because PHNs also know sugar is a big culprit in spiking insulin and making waistlines larger, they seek to limit sugar intake and make their choices count, especially if those choices and calories are in beverage form. PHNs are inherently skeptical of food marketers and therefore take the time to look at labels. For example, 20 ounces of Coca-Cola is 240 calories and 65 grams of carbs. Oh, and that 65 grams of carbs is 65 grams of sugar. Example two, 15 ounces of Naked Juice Green Machine, 270 calories, 63 grams of carbs, of which 55 grams come from sugar. Think about those two drinks I just mentioned. One is a can of cola that you know is bad for you. The other is marketed as a healthy beverage, but they're both terrible for you. PHNs know that fruit juice is pretty much sugar water. Most granola bars have as many carbs and sugar as a candy bar, and a healthy muffin is a calorie bomb. PHNs want the most bang for their buck, so they educate themselves on food. Learn about the food you're eating. You're a grown adult, and you could take three minutes and Google it. Once you know the composition of your meals, you can start to make subtle adjustments or change quantities over time as you start to approach a healthier weight. Be okay with being just good enough to start and get more accurate as time goes on. For each food, learn the following. Total calories, serving size, fat, protein, and carbs. Keep a food journal and just write down what you eat every day for a week. If your weight isn't changing, adjust down the total calories and minimize sugar consumption and see how your weight changes. Make small adjustments over time and see how your body responds. Speaking of goals, number five. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part two of the post titled The 10 Things Perpetually Healthy Nerds Do That Unhealthy People Don't by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. If I could summarize the theme of part two of this post, it's give yourself some time. Stick to it. Don't worry about being perfect to begin with. And I completely agree. When you first start on your journey to a better, healthier life, you're gonna be gung-ho about it. Your motivation, your willpower are gonna be at their peaks. But after a week or two weeks or a month of doing this, your willpower is shot. Your motivation, not so strong. Those foods that you've cut out of your diet, suddenly you miss them a lot. Remember, it took a long time to get where you are now. It took a long time to build those quote unquote bad habits. It's gonna take time to change those habits. So please be patient with yourselves. Know that your motivation is gonna be high in the beginning but it's not gonna be so high later on. Know that your willpower will fluctuate. Accept that fact. Be kind to yourselves knowing that fact and stay consistent. For some, I've mentioned this before, staying consistent means maybe telling somebody about your goals or even better, writing them down and putting them somewhere so you see it all the time. And to stay on track to meet those goals, write down what you've been doing, whether it's what you've been eating or how you exercise today or for how long. Those things matter and they will keep you on track. 
Now, really quickly, once again, before I go, if you wanna be entered into our book raffle happening next week, plus you get some free spreadsheet tools from us, a video tutorial and lots more, come by oldpodcast.com and join the mailing list. Thank you as always for being here. Thank you for listening every day. Thank you for subscribing and sharing this show with someone. Hope you're having a great week so far. I'll see you back here tomorrow where we'll continue Steve's post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.